It seems like all the financial influencers have been talking about this bank crisis, how the Fed has been raising interest rates, which eventually would break something. We all knew that raising interest rates would cause some kind of turmoil in the economy, which eventually led to this whole bank crisis situation with these regional banks, these smaller banks having a major time paying out all of the withdrawals, this whole bank run situation because they've invested all of the deposit money into low interest assets, these T-bills that were paying out very low interest during times when the Fed had interest rates all the way down to 0%. And now all of those investments have gone sour ever since the Fed started raising interest rates faster than any other time in history. This has led to a lot of people being very concerned about their money not being safe in these smaller regional banks, that they're pulling out their money if they certainly have well over $250,000, which is not covered by FDIC insurance and so this is leading to bank runs. The banks, these regional banks, they don't have the money around to pay out all of these withdrawals and so they're running into this major issue and so this is causing this whole bank run situation. We've seen it with Silvergate, Signature, SVB, First Republic Bank and Credit Suisse is just to name a few. It said that 186 banks are going through the same vulnerabilities as what SVB went through. And so that's just absolutely insane. Graham Stephan, as well as Clear Value Tax and Andre Jick made the same video talking about the next bank that could potentially be under fire. And that bank is... Deutsche Bank. And so Deutsche Bank also just so happens to be the biggest bank in Germany. So if they go under, it is not going to be good news, obviously, for Germany, for their economy. And that could certainly trickle into the American economy as well. And Deutsche Bank certainly has not had a clean history. They've been known to do a lot of very questionable things in the past that you could go ahead and look up yourself. But these are things such as manipulating currency rates or spying or even as bad as money laundering. Wondering. And so they've definitely done a lot of very sketchy things, but not to say that they are as bad as Credit Suisse, which is a lot of people are saying, you know, in comparison, they're actually very profitable. They've been turning things around and they've had a lot of very good years up until now. However, the reason why so many are comparing Deutsche Bank and thinking that they might fall under the same fate as Credit Suisse is due to this whole situation of the credit default swap. And if you don't know what that is, to put it simply, it's really just showing the health of a bank and Deutsche Bank is not looking healthy and it's actually looking very similar to what Credit Suisse was going through when they were going into their hardship and their situation as well before they actually got up, bought out and combined with UBS. So Deutsche Bank is not looking healthy and that's why so many investors and so many depositors are getting quite worried. That's why so many people are thinking that Deutsche Bank might be next on the chopping block. And so with this whole situation too, with Credit Suisse and UBS Bank is them combining together. And when they combine together, this is causing a crazy situation to happen. It is actually creating a mega bank. And when this mega bank is going to be created, it's actually going to be bigger than any bank we've seen already, bigger than any of the top five banks, bigger than Bank of America and bigger than JP Morgan Chase. Now with this whole situation of Credit Suisse merging into UBS, which was a solution to a problem to save Credit Suisse, it is certainly looking like it's bringing up a lot newer problems that Switzerland has to deal with. And this is the part of the video where we bring it all back to the Fed and their battle with inflation to get it to their target of 2%. We're currently sitting at 6%, so they've been raising and hiking interest rates, raised it again by 0.25 basis points, rounding it out to around 5% federal funds rate. So the Fed knew, I think, that they were going to break something in the economy. There's certain things that are just very obvious. Things such as the tick up and unemployment rate, possible recession, and of course, something else that comes up in the economy. And so for this situation, it's the bank crisis. With this whole bank crisis situation, it has primarily only hurt the smaller regional banks and the larger banks are safe 
for now. And so these smaller banks, what they actually do best is originate new loans. They give out loans to businesses and to individuals to buy whatever they want to buy. Now with this whole regional bank situation where they're having such a hard time even having enough money to pay out all of the outflows, all of the withdrawals that are happening, they're not going to have the capacity as they used to to create and write new loans. So if you were a small business who needs a loan to buy some kind of equipment for your business or you were an individual looking to buy a car or a house and so you would typically go to a regional bank go to these banks to get a loan but what's end up happening is that these regional banks have increased their lending standards to the point where it makes it very difficult to get these loans and so you might not qualify as you used to so what this will end up happening is that well now that you can't borrow any money that money that would typically be borrowed would eventually make its way into the economy to stimulate it and new money would be injected into the economy. But if that's not happening anymore, if these new loans aren't being created anymore, then that means that the current money that's already in the system, eventually over time, it'll slowly start to get sucked out of the system and the supply of money will continue to reduce. Why? Because the people now who have accumulated tons of debt, businesses who have accumulated tons of debt during the pandemic, well, they're going to need a service that debt they're going to need to pay it back and so the money that's already in the system is going to be used to pay back that debt if new money isn't being injected into the system so over time the money supply they call it the m2 money supply will slowly start to diminish and dry up however that's actually the preferred and the better case scenario because the alternative would be that these debtors companies and individuals would be unable to pay back their debts. Well, why? Because they could potentially have been laid off at their jobs or companies not making as much money as they used to. And so they could be unable to pay back all the debts that they've accumulated. And this eventually would lead back to the lender being in some major issues. And who is the lender? These banks, these regional banks, looking very likely that the next major wave of problems for the banks is going to be their borrowers going more delinquent, not being able to pay back their debts and possibly even defaulting on their debts and so that's going to be more problems on top of what these banks are already having to deal with so all of this is to say that maybe this is going to help quite a bit with inflation getting down to that two percent goal and this is probably all a part of the fed's plan and so we'll actually see how it actually all plays out and so nobody wants to wish any of this hardship on anybody and you know with this whole bank crisis situation but it could just be what the economy needs in order to get through this whole high inflation situation and we'll eventually see how it all plays out and i'll do my best to keep you up to date so definitely hit that subscribe button if you haven't already i'm trying really hard to get this channel monetized so i need a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours so if you're still watching you are freaking awesome all right and also please consider hitting that thumbs up button it really really helps out the channel all right that's about it for this video. My name is Jimmy Invest and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.